Okay, so let me show you a few examples of how you can replace skies. Uh, replacing skies is something which is actually not that easy. I mean, the technique is pretty easy, but finding the right sky for the right photo and the right way of implementing it uh, actually took me quite some uh, months of practice, to be honest. And I'm going to try to, uh, in these few videos, give me what has worked the best for me. Uh, the, the, the tricky thing is to get something that looks realistic and not uh, totally uh, Photoshop. I like when somebody cannot tell if the sky has been changed or not. Usually it's going to get a photo from very like boring to very dramatic. Let, let's start by off with this example of... Um, that, that's something I shot on the roof of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is a church in Paris and it's 284 stairs to come up there. And uh, this is a very famous view because you got the Eiffel Tower there and you got the Seine and it's, I wanted to get the statue there, uh, you know, as like a foreground element. But, you know, the sky was boring. Uh, the sky was very boring and so, uh, you know, I mean, it took me like one half hour to get up there, you know, because you have a lot of waiting and, you know, and you take the photo and it's just, you know, it's not good, you know, it's not going to be a photo. Uh, I don't like so much to do sky replacement, but sometime, you know, I like to play around with it, you know, I like to come back to a place and having the right sky, but sometimes I get really some nice effect with replacing the sky, and I want to show you, uh, show that to you. Oh, anyway, so my workflow is this, I first start off in a Lightroom, doing my usual stuff, which is like opening up the shadows. Now on bringing down the highlights, I don't do it, that's the only difference on the workflow, because uh, I'm going to use in Photoshop a lot, not all the time, but a lot, the multiply uh, fusion mode and uh, blending mode and the thing with that is that anything which is white is going to be transparent so that's kind of cool so i'm going to keep it that way but i'm going to get um so i'm going to press the alt key and go right on the whites until the clip uh which is basically clipping is that you know the, whatever you see that is becoming 100 percent white there is no more information so i'm going to back it down to about this and i'm going to darken a lot the photo uh, that's the opposite. On the blacks, I go left until I, I see some clipping. Uh, what you see here is pixels which are 100% black. So, that's already looking better. Um, I think I'm gonna uh, make the photo a little bit more blue, just a tiny bit, and add some clarity. Because, you know, I like the details here in, in, the, in the buildings. I think it's pretty cool. And to make it even stronger, I think I'm gonna go to details. Uh, there is hardly any noise in this photo, there really is hardly any noise, but when there is no noise, I still take out 10, in case there is some hidden noise and no one told me about it. Okay, and then I have this formula where I'm taking 100 and I deduct from it the noise reduction, so it's going to be a sharpening of around 90, something like that. Okay, that's perfect. The thing is, by sharpening, I get a really sharp photo, but then anything like here, for example, is getting very, very uh, grainy. And that's because sharpening is getting anything which is a bit noisy sharpened. So to get rid of that, you have to go press the Alt key and go on the masking tool and, and go right until anything which is white is getting sharpened. It's in the black, it's not. So like the sky, I don't want any sharpening. And so now we got a very nice diffuse sky again and a very sharpened city. So that's kind of cool. Um, I think I had some uh, chromatic aberration. Yeah, a little bit. Check out, you know, the little reds and greens there. So I might enable the profile correction and uh, remove chromatic aberration. Yeah, which did the trick. Check it out. I don't know if you can see on the video, but before you had a bit of red and blue and now there is not. Okay, and... Uh, yeah, that's about it. Maybe uh, let's see if that does anything. The upright function. Okay, so that's about it. That's my basic retouching. Then I'm going to go right click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. But what I'm going to show you is can work in Photoshop CC 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, explosion. No, on many versions. I'm not going to do any special CC tricks here. Okay, so that's the... That's the that's the baby. That's the photo on its own layer. So I know some of you are not very familiar with Photoshop, so I'm going to go slow because um, it's going to get a bit tricky. Then I'm going to go back to Lightroom and I'm going to go to the sky collection that you bought in the same time that training with this 40 skies that I've taken over the years. And I'm going to see which one I'm going to use. 
On this one, I think I am gonna give a try. I want like a daylight sky, but I want some details in it. I think um, I'm gonna go for something like that. Yeah, something like that. I just wanna add some, uh, see if I can do something with that. Okay, so I'm gonna right click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. That's gonna open another tab with the sky. So now you've got two tabs. One is with the photo and one is with the sky. To get the sky to go over to the other tab, you take the move tool, you click on the sky, you drag and drop it over the tab of uh, the statue, you hold on the shift key before, before letting go your mouse and boom, it's centered in the middle. That's kind of cool, that is kind of cool. Um, all right, now, I think I'm gonna reverse this, but first, I wanna show you a trick. I'm gonna put this in multiply mode. And in multiply mode, anything which is white is gonna basically uh, disappear and, uh, and become transparent. So then I'm gonna press Command T, and what Command T is gonna do is on the layer where there is the sky, it's gonna get these little handles there. What I want to do is, if, you, if I move my mouse out of this little uh, four handles, I get a rotating uh, arrow, and then I can just rotate the sky and see if, uh, if that could be in any way better. Now that looks weird, you can tell it's upside down, the clouds don't look natural. So maybe something like that could do the trick. Uh, you can just make it bigger and actually even like this. Uh, yeah, that could be something. Okay. Okay, and right away I can tell if the sky is going to fit or not. And you know what? Actually, this one, I don't think it's going to fit. So I'm going to take it, drag and drop it on the trash. One of the key things on uh, sky replacement is really finding the right sky. So I'm going to go back to my sky library. And I think I'm going to go on this one. I want something which is, you see, that photo is very uh, light. You know, so the sky that I put was too blue, too dark. It just wasn't fitting. So now I think I'm going to go for this one. So I'm going to ed uh, right click, edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. Uh, we have the bird, we have the beach on the sky, but that's fine. So I still have the move tool. And I'm going to still move it over to the right tab, which is this one. And now I'm going to put this back in. Uh, but you see now it's a lot lighter. So if I go to multiply, uh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a bit better. Okay, that sort of fits a bit better. I think I'm gonna Command T, make this a bit bigger like this. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit, something like that. Yeah, I like that. That's gonna be more natural. Now, of course, it looks kind of weird if you put it that way, you know, it's like, uh, even so that you have the blending mode of multiply, uh, which is basically anything which is white here is becoming transparent and that is through the sky but you've got this going on and it's kind of weird. So um, we need what we call a, um, a layer mask for this. We click on this. By default, the layer mask is white, meaning that anything which is on la layer is gonna be visible. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is take the gradient tool, which is here, make sure that black is my foreground color and white is my background color. Then I'm gonna choose here, I'm gonna go from black to white, okay? And uh, I'm going to make a grain and I'm going to hold down the shift key and click from the bottom up until about the horizontal, yeah, about here, something like that. And you see that's going to make a gradient and it's starting to make this invisible, but it's still visible. It's still not fully realistic. We can tell something's going on. So there is a little trick. Once the gradient is in place, all you have to do is press Command L, like levels, or Control L on Windows and you get this little window that opens. And this little window that opens has three sliders. Basically what it's gonna do, it's gonna, um, what that changes is the contrast of something. And I'm gonna change the contrast of my layer. You see the principle of the layer is anything which is black is gonna be, is gonna make something invisible. So if I move right, you see what happens? It's becoming more black. And now all of a sudden, uh, this little thing that we had here uh, from the beach, it disappear. If I go left, it's going to reappear. Look, if I go the whole way, it's very there. And I can just move it, and it's magical. And I can just get this one in. Something like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, all right. 
Now, I find that the sky is uh, lacking of strength, so I'm going to go on the sky itself and press Command L uh, and see if I can do something about that sky. It's Command L, so that's the level. I see if I can, uh, if I move the first slider, I'm going to make my sky a bit darker. Uh, and this is basically, this is a black slider, a gray slider, and a white slider. The black slider, uh, if you go to the right, is gonna anything which is black is gonna make it darker. You see, so that's yeah, that could be interesting. That could be interesting. And then same thing here. That's gonna make anything which is uh, it's gonna basically clip anything. I don't want that. Uh, all right. So I'm just playing around with the three sliders basically until I have something that I like. Okay, but now look. Um, yeah, it's kind of visible, not so much. Let's see before and after. Yeah, the line is still a bit visible, so we can go back here, Command L again, and just play around with our... Yeah, make sure it's like that. Okay, so now we have the sky which is pretty much in. But you see, it made the top of the statue a bit dark, right? We don't want that. So, for this, I'm going to take off the mask uh, that layer temporarily. I'm going to click on the statue itself. And I want to make a selection just of the statue. So for this, I'm going to take the magic wand tool. And uh, not magic wand tool. I'm sorry. Quick selection tool. I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Uh, I'm taking it back where I just can press W. And I have it. And I'm just going to select the head of that statue. Very easy to do with, uh, with that. Okay. And uh, okay, actually, I don't care. I really care about the head. I'm, I need to make sure the head is really well selected. So to make sure it's really well selected, I'm going to click on Refine Edge. On Refine Edge, I always use the Overlay Mode. Why? Because the Overlay Mode is the I think it's the only mode where you can really see well where the limits of the mask. Uh, I'm going to uh, because if I go on Marching Ants, you know, you just see Marching Ants around. Your selected error it's not very visible you cannot do nothing with that on black it's good but then you don't see what's uh, what's behind it on white same thing black and white you see nothing on layers you see transparency anyway on overlay I think you see the best so I always use overlay and then I'm just gonna I have this tool which is the edge detection tool and I'm just gonna brush around the head make sure that the edge detection has been very well done here that's going to be like perfect then i'm going to do smart radius and just one pixel to make sure it's even more perfect okay so when i click on okay i have a selection of the statue okay of that now i'm going to go on the layers i'm going to reactive that layer i'm going to go on the mask i have this selected right this is selected and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to edit fill so i'm on the mask and i want to fill this with black you see you have different content and so what that's going to do, look, it's going to make it, I show you the before, Command Z. It's just going to make the statue brighter because the, not the, the sky is not going over that. Command D to unselect, make sure it looks natural. And you see, it makes just the sky uh, comes, you know, is better, is more there. Okay, now that bird is really annoying me. Well, that's pretty simple. All you have to do is click on the mask and you can take the spot hitting brush tool. And just brush over the bird. And as it is a sky, it should be easy to be taken out. No, it's not. It's And when it doesn't work, you just press Command C. When it doesn't work, just make sure you are in normal mode when you do it. I have to go back to normal mode. Oh, you see, normal mode is pretty good on that one sky. It makes it, it makes the sky even more fuzzy. Uh, that could be a happy accident. Okay, let me try again. If I can do something like that. Taking of that bird. Yeah, that worked better. It's just because you, you shouldn't use that tool in multiply mode. It does weird stuff. So now I have a choice between normal mode and the multiply mode. Uh, normal mode is going to make it more hazy, which could be something, actually. You know what? I think I'm going to go for normal mode. I kind of like that with the normal mode uh, because the mask is doing a very good job of blending in on this one. So, uh, yeah, I just make it, it's make it, uh, yeah, it gives more depth, you know, what's behind is becoming, uh, it, it gives a bit more depth. Okay, so um, I'm not going to go to file, close, 
save and it's going to come back to Lightroom and I'm going to finish. Oh, I don't need that sky anymore. So command W, which is another way to close. Don't save. Command W, don't save. So my Photoshop is empty. I'm going to go back to Lightroom and I'm going to go back to my collection where I have the raw files and see. Uh huh. So that's something that can happen when you work with collections and you save something from Photoshop. It just does not appear in your collection. So all you have to do is click right click on the original photo, go to go to folder in library and there next to the photo uh, we should be we should get yes that's the one we just did okay let me make sure yeah that's the one with the hazy look that's the one we just did and then I can just drag and drop it back to my collections which was raw files okay so now we are in a collection with this Okay, and now last but not least, usually I go back to the develop module and I keep, once I've put my sky, and I like this one because it's got like depth to it, you know, it's, it, I made it even more, uh, you know, depth comes from also from having very uh, foggy stuff in the background and very clear stuff in the foreground. I kind of like that. The only thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to double process it. For this, I'm just going to reopen up some shadows a little bit, bring down a little bit of highlights. I'm going to do my blacks. Oh, but they are clipping right away. Maybe this a bit more. It's already, yeah, the contrast is already pretty cool. And um, I think I'm going to I'm gonna give it a look. I'm going to give it a look. And for this, I'm going to go straight to split toning. But that's just me, because I'm crazy about these split toning looks. And I'm going to add some blue in the shadows. And some warmth in the highlights. Something like that. And that... That is way too much, so I'm going to bring down the saturation of the blues that I just added. And I'm going to do something with saturation with that. Just to give it a little strange look, you know, because it's a strange place. Uh, the whole thing is a bit too bright. So I'm going to maybe bring it down here. And uh, I think I'm going to add some vignetting to close this photo, something like that. Yeah. Vignetting is going to work fine. And um, yeah, add a bit more clarity maybe. No, not, not too much because it's double clarity. But I like the dramatic w looks that it has. Um, yeah, I like it. May add a bit more yellow to it. Yeah, slightly a bit more yellow. Uh, in the, uh, you know, it's just fine tuning. Every time I retouch this photo, I give it a different look. You know, it's a complete different. I think I'm gonna add a bit more blue in the shadows. A bit more blue or green. Yeah, in the shadows, something like that. I want to give it like a bit of a, a Hollywood look. You know, it's very blue or green in the shadows, but it's just arbitrary. The main key point is was to put in that sky because that's the original photo. Uh, let me reset it. That's to have the really original, original, original photo, which is that pretty boring shot. And now we've got, I think, a more interesting shot, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So it's, it's you know, it's it takes really a uh, trial and error, but I like, you know, how it's getting very hazy, you know, there, giving depth, how it's very clear here, you know, and uh, very dramatic in skies. I actually like that photo, and uh, I, ha I made a similar photo like this that went first page to 500px, so people really like that photo, and I wanted to show you how I did it. Okay, uh, off to the next part.